Hey, welcome back to the program. We now turn our attention to the National Assembly and take a look at some of the efforts being taken to make life easier for Nigerians who have been affected by COVID-19. As you know, states across the country have announced various measures to curb the spread of the virus. And most of these measures are affecting the economic activities of individuals, families, and companies. So the House of Reps came up with a bill to ease this difficult times for citizens. It's called the Emergency Economic Stimulus Bill 2020. Well, the document which was passed in record time includes a tax rebate for companies who retain their staff during this phase, three months mortgage moratorium for public servants and civil servants, and a reduction in customs duties on medical supplies and protective gear aimed at fighting COVID-19 virus. The bill will now go to the Senate, where it will be passed and forwarded to the president. But big questions. How far reaching will this be? How many Nigerians will it impact? And what happens to those who might be left behind? Let's find out from Honorable Benjamin Kalu, who's a spokesperson of the House of Representatives and a member of APC Abia, as well as Dr. Kach Ononuju, who's a PDP member and an economist. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on the program. OK, let me begin with Honorable Kalu now. We understand this bill is in place, you know, it addresses some key issues. But if you can give us a figure, how many Nigerians do you think this particular uh, emergency stimulus bill will impact? How many? Do you have a figure, perhaps? To get the figure, you know, you need to understand the objective of the bill. The objective of the bill, the benefit of the bill. It is from there you'll be able to compute. And what is the bill seeking to achieve? The bill is seeking to remove the fiscal bottlenecks around importation of these essential health materials that we need at the moment to be able to cope this problem. And you, uh, you, you don't have the full number of people affected by this coronavirus. Right. If you ask me, every Nigerian. Because mm. the economy of Nigeria is not isolated from the economy of the world. And if the world is bleeding at the moment, Nigeria is not isolated. So Absolutely. the policy that has to do with taking care of our health is for the whole of Nigeria. Right. The now reason you look I at ask... also the second objective it seeks to achieve, mm. which is... Pardon, pardon me, just let me, let me put this in just a moment. We, we mentioned some of this, you know, this aims of, of, of the bill. But the reason yeah. I ask is people are asking, how yeah. will this directly impact on Nigerians whose you know, economic viability has been impacted during this period. I mean, we can count how many people are employed, gainfully employed in Nigeria. You know that a lot more percentage you know, live on a day-to-day -day basis. So the question is, will this also affect them directly? Of course, it will affect them directly. If we cannot give money, maybe distribute cash across the citizens of the country, at least one of the few things we can do is to make sure we don't take from those who need them to sustain the economy. In this case, uh, the tax um, um, incentive, the tax rebate that we mentioned, if, it is if, if we safeguide that for the companies, uh, I'm sure it's going to help the economy. Now, if you go down also to uh, the, the second objective of this particular bill, which has to do with protection of employment, though everybody is not employed in Nigeria, but if we make those who are employed to lose their job, definitely the employment queue is going to increase. So this bill is seeking to make sure that those who don't leave, who don't retrench between right. the 1st of March to the 31st of December of this year, right. that they are going to enjoy 50% okay. tax rebate. rebate. Right. And you know what that means to the economy. Mm. And you know that you know, the ripple effect will be beneficial to almost everyone in the, in the, in the, in the, in the country. Right. Let's get Dr. Anonuju to weigh in on this. And the question is quite simple. How stimulating is this stimulus? Quite simple. Thank you very much. I do not see anything that concerns the people of Nigeria in the proposed bill. Don't forget, our economy is 65% informal, 35% formal economy. So in that 65% informal, there is nothing else that concerns the people. If you look at these similar measures internationally in America, there is a direct payment of more than $1,200 to the citizens so that they will have spending cash in which when they spend, 
that will serve as a stimulus to actually spur economic activity. There is nothing like that in Nigeria. What they are proposing about is government's procurement incentives. So it has nothing to do with the people. So if you're talking about procuring face mask government, procuring whatever government, allowing some kind of tax rebate for the 35% of companies, which is the real economy, what is it we have for the 65% of the economy, which is informal, the people? Nothing yet. So I don't think uh, the government has set purpose yet to wars. I'm in the rating, the hardship that but will occur. Do Dr. Nanju, I mean, would you take it away from, I mean, the tax out. rebate, for example, uh, the talk about mortgage moratorium. I, I, I know I asked Honorable Carlo about how many Nigerians this would impact, but I mean, for what it's worth, do you think this will at least address some part of this challenge? Well, you know what Nigeria is. One is a proposal. A lot of the proposals mentioned previously has not worked. I do not know how this one is going to go. Right. But the real thing that will impact directly on the people is what do Nigerians gain? Mm. If they had proposed giving money to everybody that has a bank account, Yes, that we would have understood. Okay. Put him spending money in the hands of Nigerians. Just a moment. In that of the Just United a moment, States. Dr. Nanuju. Now that you bring up that issue about money again, let, let's find out from Honorable Kalu. So yeah, in other climes, the stimulus bill comes with a check money. I mean, $1,200, it ranges depending on how much you earn. The question is, is that something you considered for this stimulus bill and why was it not included? No, at the moment we cannot afford it. Let's be realistic here. It's, uh, I heard what the former vice president proposed, 10,000 naira for each home. It will not work. You remember that our economy is based on um, revenue coming from oil and gas. And you know the global economy with regards to oil and gas at the moment. We benchmark on 57 and today we have below 30. Where is the money going to come from? Let's, let's be realistic. It's not going to work, but there are policies in place. My uh, friend here did not uh, um, uh, uh, consider the interventions that have been made by the federal government, even though I, don't, I do not speak for them. Uh, if you look at the intervention from the CBN, you understand that there was uh, 3.5 trillion that was injected into the economy. You will also notice there was, as well, 50 billion that just recently was injected to be able to you know, have targeted SMEs and also household. Mm. If you check also, you see there was 100 billion that had been in injected to target 10 pharmaceutical companies right. that one will generate job will also help in the, also producing some of the mm. things that we need. The government is making efforts towards this direction. But mm. to take cash and distribute across board into people's account is a dream that we cannot achieve at the moment. Right. That Honorable Kalu, just a uh, moment now. The, just a moment. I understand that this bill has been passed by the House of Reps. Uh, so what's the journey like to uh, the presidency no. briefly? And what's the time frame? Yes, yes. Briefly speaking, um, this uh, bill, uh, it has gone through first reading, second reading, third reading, and it, it was supposed to uh, moved to the Senate the same day, but you know, it is tradition of the National Assembly that when we lose somebody, we don't sit the following day. So right. uh, that day, the previous day, they lost uh, Senator Rose Oko, and based on that, they did not sit. So if they had sat, they would have also given a concurrence on that day. But having said that, we will wait for 12 days if the Senate is not able to come back okay. uh, within these um, two weeks Let, and let's uh, get, look, look into it. If they don't come me. back, we will wait for 12 days. Let, let's get Dr. Nonoju's closing thoughts now uh, uh, on the program. So in addition to this bill, Dr. Nonoju, what key areas should we be looking at to stimulate the nation's economy? If you can do that in 30 seconds, please. You've just heard it. There is nothing for the people. My words go towards the suggestions by Vice President Atiku that we do something for the Nigerian people. Uh, but then my honorable member said, no, there's nothing for the people. It's not possible to think anything or do anything for the people. So I think uh, it doesn't really make sense talking right. about what government says. Government's rhetorics, me and you know what it means. It's just government stories. Well, there Dr. is nothing right now from the Nigerian government for the Nigerian people.
Well, Dr. Kachin Onoju would like to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program tonight. He's a PDP member and an economist, and he uh, also, was also joined by Honorable Benjamin Kalu, the spokesperson in the House of Reps and a member of APC, Abia State. Thank you for your time. Well, that's the program for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kaido Kikilu. Bye for now.